Hello and welcome everyone, Lionheart here, and today I'm reviewing the Shogun Bros Mark 1 Gaming Mouse, the Commander series. So, before I show you the actual mouse itself, this is the packaging it comes in. I want to show you because it is actually really nice, premium looking packaging. Gives you a lot of information about the mouse as well, which I'm really going to let you guys know, and then we're going to have a look at the beastie itself. So, the Mark 1 um, has a gaming grade laser sensor and image processor, 8200 DPI, pretty standard for sort of a high end gaming mouse these days. 1000 hertz polling rate, extreme movement uh, sensation, 12,000 frames per second, golden plated USB, military grade uh, fabric cable, driver free uh, capability, uh, rubberized surface for the best grip, uh, X, Y um, uh, mode uh, and mode DPI indicator built onto the top of the, uh, on the, the mouse, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, yeah, and, and plenty of grip on both thumb and finger rest sides, which I'll show you. But anyway, that's the box. Also, I should say it comes in a, a variety of colours from what I've seen. Um, links in the description will take you, I think, to the black or red version that I'm about to show you. So obviously it comes in a red version, a black version, and a kind of military camo green version. Those are just the ones I've seen on their website. There may be more. Link to the Shogun Bros website uh, is in the description so you can have a look at that a bit more. Anyway, that's the box. Here is the beastie. Here is the Mark I Ballista. Uh, it looks lovely. Now this is going to be a slightly bigger mouse than some. Uh, I wouldn't actually say it's huge. I've seen some reviews saying this is a huge mouse. Um, it's, it's a reasonable sized mouse. I wouldn't say it's huge. I mean, maybe from here it looks like the camera makes it look like it's the size of my head. But that's uh, in perspective. In fact, let's give you some perspective. Here is a Samsung Galaxy S4, and here is the Ballista. About the same size uh, in terms of width as the S4, and pretty much the same height. So, same size as your normal smartphone. I don't know if that matters or not, but some people want to see you know, how big these things actually are. It's not too big, it's a reasonable size mouse. So, let's have a look at its design. Well. It has a really nice, natural, ergonomic grip fit to it. A lot of mice, I often refer to um, them having in a kind of a breaking in period, similar to how women have to break in new shoes. Um, I think that this is kind of the male equivalent, breaking in a new mouse to get used to your grip. Normally this takes me about a week. This, literally the first moment I put my hand on it, I went, huh, oh, hmm. This feels good. This naturally just fits to the shape of, of how I want to grip a mouse. Now, maybe that's just my personal preference. I did try to get my family to try it, my brothers to try it, my parents, which was hilarious actually seeing them go, what, what is this? It looks like a crazy contraption. Um, it's a mouse mother. It's fine. Don't worry. It's a mess alive. No. Anyway, we won't go there. Um, but it naturally fitted their grips. You know, they were very happy with it. It didn't rub in any of the wrong places. Um, you know, you, you weren't constantly kind of adjusting your hand to be like, okay, I've got to get used to this. It just naturally, like a glove. So you can see on this, uh, on the right hand side, there is a little bit of an ind, um, well, not an indent, uh, a little uh, platform as such, a groove for your hand and finger to rest on there. You can see the bump. So with that, your hand, naturally, your, uh, your finger can rest on top of it and your pinky will go happily underneath. You don't need any of these extra rests that pop out to the side that the rat series of mice have. Um, your hand naturally fits to it, solid. Now this has a matte finish, so there's no rubber grip here, but really you just need to be able to rest your fingers on that side of the mouse, I've found. On the thumb rest side, this is where the rubber comes on in and you get that nice rubber grip, your thumb is solid onto it, it gives a fair amount of grip uh, and friction there if I try and pull my thumb away. So that rests there, nice and solid grip, really like that. So that is the design, it kind of, I mean, this is probably a design of mouse that goes back several years actually, this is just kind of the, the natural ergonomic um, grip really. Um, there's nothing too flashy about it. It's actually quite simple, and it's a shame almost a lot of um, mouse gaming mouse uh, manufacturers go for these crazy shapes that make it a little bit awkward for you to grip them. This goes, we don't need to make it, you know, over the top. We just need the hand to sit on it comfortably and not for them to, you know, wiggle around, which is what it does perfectly. 
So, button-wise, how many buttons do you have? Well, you have a total of 10 customizable buttons, and then you have this configuration button here in the center, which allows you to, on the fly, change the X and Y axes, which are uh, shown on this LED indicator over here. I said indicator really weirdly there, indicator, um, over on the left-hand side there next to your in index finger. You then have... Uh, four lights here showing the level of DPI setting you're on and you can change all that in the software which I'll show in a moment and you use this button down here to push up go up a level as you can see the level is now increased on the mouse all up to four and we can come down all the way to one but I prefer mine on level two so you've got those buttons there you have forward and back for web browsing or uh, I often use these buttons I uh, macro them up as dodge forward or roll backwards in MMOs and things like that. You have two um, customizable buttons on the right hand side here called Alpha and Beta um, which you can set up as any macros you want and then the scroll wheel obviously you've got the scroll functionality you can push it in for middle mouse or you can push to the right for a button press or to the left which I think is pretty good they've added in that functionality because a lot of scroll wheels actually do go left and right and some of them actually make a click but they don't register as a button press um, Shogun Bros have made them the, you know, their own buttons which is great because you could do them as tilting or leaning motion especially something like Battlefield 3 or 4 rather, why am I thinking 3? Probably because 3 is better than 4 in my opinion at least its netcode is a bit better um, you then obviously have the mode button down here which can switch you through various different colours uh, we've gone to green, probably can't show up in this light too much then we've gone to blue then we've gone to a pink and then to a sort of turquoise colour which then will pulsate, I won't show you the colour any better than that, and then back to red. So you have five different modes, ten different customised uh, buttons on each mode, so you've got fifty buttons you can essentially do and you can quickly switch to that with the mode um, button whenever you want which is great. Left and right uh, mouse buttons and that is pretty much it for buttons. Obviously you've got this nice uh, military grade braided cable nice and solid and strong and at the other end which is currently plugged into my PC is a gold plated USB cable now before we show you the before we before I show you the software here is one of the main features actually I'd like to point out about this mouse the laser sensor now you're probably thinking right yeah there's a laser sensor what about it it's underneath the index finger now most mice have their laser sensor sort of directly in the middle around about here so if anything it's kind of underneath the scroll wheel or, or that area there. Because it's underneath the index finger, you will find yourself pointing towards your target a little bit more, which in FPS actually makes a lot of sense because you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna go for that guy over there. So you, you point and move with the mouse because obviously the mouse has the built-in, um, you know, full looking around um, controls, both on the X and Y axes. So you're looking around completely with that and by having it underneath the index finger, and that is obviously your trigger finger for, for most FPS games and things like that. It makes a lot of sense, and I can't say that this has made me more accurate, but I feel like it's made me more accurate. Um, you know, maybe maybe I've just got a little bit better at Battlefield recently. But I do, at first it was a bit of a weird sensation, um, kind of moving off with it to point where I wanted to go, or where I wanted to shoot rather. But it makes a lot of sense once you get used to it, and it, it didn't take me very long at all to, to get used to it. A couple of games of the Battlefield uh, Hardline beta, and I was very much in love with the laser sensor being underneath the index finger. Went back and tried uh, a Rat 3, which has its laser sensor centered in the middle, and I was kind of like, uh, right, um, this just doesn't feel as natural. So went straight back to this, and having that uh, laser sensor under the index finger just feels very natural, and something that I'm surprised that other manufacturers haven't done before. Maybe maybe they have done, maybe I just haven't looked at those mice before. But, but all the gaming mice that I've used recently, none of them have featured a laser sensor underneath the index finger. So apart from that, you obviously have these little um, sort of rubber feet here to help with gliding around and what have you. Um, personally, it would have been nice if there had been some extra ones included in the box, because obviously these wear down and then you want to replace them and things like that. Just stuff I've seen other um, companies provide. But... Um, I'm sure you can always get um, a couple of extra if you perhaps maybe email the company or something like that. So that is a look at the buttons, the kind of ergonomic design of it all, and all of its various um, sort of physical features. Now we're going to look at the software before we wrap up and give it a score. Uh, finally run down the pros and cons 
for this mouse in the review. So this is the uh, the Ballista Mark 1. Let's have a look at that software. So here we are looking at the software that comes with the Shogun Bros Ballista Mark 1 uh, gaming mouse. It has three different levels from button function, macro to DPI and tool settings. We'll start off with the button function that tells you pretty much quick layout for each of the five modes what each of the buttons do. So you can obviously configure everything through here um, through the macro setting the next one down and you can customize you know to do whatever you want here very powerful uh, bit of software you can export macros import them export them do whatever you want to them um, weight commands and things like that there's plenty of stuff to do here nice easy to use software finally the DPI and tool settings where you can customize the four different levels of DPI settings both on the X and Y axes you can have them both going together or you can set down here independent X and Y values which you can then see on the mouse on that left hand side there X and Y for each different DPI mode so going through each of these I've currently got this set from a minimum of 1600 to a maximum of 5000 to be honest anything over 3500 is overkill for me but I didn't need to set anything in between mostly I game at uh, what I've set as my mode 2 which is 2400 DPI you can also change the report um, rate which is natively set to 1000 Hertz and scroll acceleration which is natively set to 9 that's pretty much it you can obviously reset restore and back up all your various settings there and that is the software that comes with the Ballista Mark 1 so we've had a look at the software for the Ballista Mark 1 of Shogun Bros now um I'm honestly struggling to find things wrong with this. Uh, I subscribe to PC Gamer, and while I don't always agree with their game reviews, I generally actually do find myself in agreement with most of their hardware and tech reviews. Now, that's not to say that you guys should, uh, you know, uh, you know, believe their reviews. You know, um, everyone's got their own opinions. You may not even uh, agree with my own review of this, but personally, I agree with them quite a lot. This is a great gaming mouse. This mouse has a lot of features that more expensive mice have, but it does it better. And actually having that laser sensor, which is very accurate, no complaints with it, uh, under the index finger really does offer a slightly different experience, but one that I'm pleasantly surprised with and I really enjoy. I'm giving it a solid 9 out of 10. Pretty much I can't find any real cons with this, just a few kind of personal niggles with it. Personally, I wouldn't mind the option to have um, the ability to add in some weights to it, um, extra rubber pads, things like that, just for kind of maintenance and upkeep. Um, the weight issue, uh, or rather, it's, it's not an issue, this is actually the perfect weight, I would say, but I always like the ability to add in extra weight, so you know I can make it heavier or lighter should I want to. I've seen some reviewers say this was too light, some people say it was too heavy. Personally, I think this is the perfect weight for it, and they balanced it really nicely. So again, one of those personal preference things. Um, the chrome on the um, the extra buttons, actually, I wouldn't mind if it had been more of a kind of metallic finish than um, kind of the more chromey, shiny look to it. But overall, it's a really nice, pleasing design, and honestly, I would actually recommend going for the red version like this one, rather than the black or the kind of camo version. I think the red really does do it a lot of justice, and uh, the ergonomic design is probably one of the simplest, but best that I've seen on a gaming mouse for a very long time. I haven't had to get used to any, you know, weird poppy out bits, or, you know, weird adjust to a different grip or something like that. My hand just naturally sits on it, and it's very happy and comfortable here. It wants to be here. I like that you can adjust the X and Y, um, you know, axis settings and uh, DPI settings on the fly. All the controls are easily accessible on the mouse, and uh, personally, I don't think it's too big. So a nine out of ten. Links are in the description where you can check out um, this mouse, buy it, look at more features on the Shogun Bros website. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I also like to say a massive thanks to Shogun Bros for getting in contact to send this to me. And uh, they also sent this rather cool shirt, which uh, has the different missions, one ballista on it, lots of guns on it. I very much like the shirt, and very comfy. Um, but yes, goes with the mouse very nicely. I'd love to see if they perhaps do a Mark II or, or something like that. I'd be very interested. I'll be, definitely be following them um, as they kind of continue to release more peripherals, or at least I hope they do. So, I hope you've enjoyed this review. Please do remember to comment, rate, subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Please do give this uh, review a share. And I will see you all again soon. Ciao for now.